It's unprecedented. It's unique. How are we feeling heading into these t last 10 games? Uh, you know, like we're experiencing a little bit of history and, and it's a lot of fun. I, you know, I was, I was actually on the, we were on the flight last night and I, I said to, to Scott and to Justin who were sitting with me, uh, this in, I was with the Diamondbacks in 2007. And although it wasn't quite this close with 10 games to go, it was even closer with one game to go. <laughs> and, and we all wound up tying three-way tie for the divisional lead and, and with the Diamondbacks, we won a tiebreaker, and the other two had to play a play-in game. And uh, and and I will say, having you know, going in the wayback machine, it was so exciting. You know, going down the the stretch, every out mattered, and you were hanging on the edge of it. And you know, every loss felt like you, you just, I mean, truly, like you just fell down and, and you can't get back up. And then every win felt like the most exciting thing that's ever happened. You know, Salk has told me a bunch over the last few years, Jerry, that it just in September, through his life experience covering baseball and, and playoffs and everything else, the teams just lock in, that there is just this locked-in mentality. Um, I'm curious, A, do, do you buy into that same camp here in September down the stretch into a playoff push? And if so, what do you look for in a locked-in baseball team? Well, I, I guess I do buy into that. I, I think there's you start to smell the finish line. And you know, I, I guess in some ways it's like a marathoner, which is weirdly enough of, when you're comparing sports, baseball is probably more similar to, to running a marathon than most anything else you can compare it to. But, uh, you know, when, when you see that finish line and you can, you can get that last bit, that kick, and, and I think you're seeing it right now, frankly, with some of the teams around us. And, you know, I, I think we showed a little of that in Oakland. We went in, we focused, and, and we did what we had to do. I think you saw it with the, the Orioles for sure over the last week or 10 days. You're seeing it for sure with the Blue Jays. They are locked in. And, and what you see is just that focus. It's, it's good at bats. You're not throwing it away. You don't see a lot of sloppy mistakes. And, and inevitably in those moments, you're, you're like, you, you find the unheralded contributor who steps up and does the big thing. And, and it happens frequently over the course of however long that lasts, including into the postseason. And, and then sometimes, you know, the Buddy Biancalanas and the Brian Doyles become famous for, for a period of time because that's what happens when, when those teams lock in. Well, you certainly have some candidates on your team for that. And, and if somebody's going to step up and be a hero here over the course of the next 10 days, we'll take it. Just looking at the, the team sort of objectively, how do you think they're playing? Uh, you know, uh, again, a lot better in, in Oakland than maybe we have in a while. And I thought we were pretty good on the homestand. We just ran into a Dodgers team that is very good. And, you know, I, I honestly, I hope we run into them again and we're better the next time. But it's, uh, you know, we, I thought we played well in the Angels series. I know we played well in this in this Oakland series that, that just passed, which was a reprieve after what was a pretty rough road trip. And, you know, right now we're doing the things that we need to do. I, I do think, uh, and this is just a, more of a feel than anything else, you know, when you're around our guys and they're out on the field, they're going through their pregame, it's the, the, the crispness in the air in Oakland helped a little bit, you know, just being, you know, you feel like it's fall baseball. And, and I know, you know, when we had our, our post game get together last night with, in the, with the coaches, it, as soon as Scott walked in the room, first thing he said was, well, boys, every game from here on out is a playoff game. And, and that's about how it feels. Mm. We've been trying to come up with a name for these 10 games. None of them have really stuck. I, I was starting to think of it almost as hell week, just thinking of how stressful things are likely to be. And, and you sort of described that very well earlier. But it's such a bizarre situation to have 10 virtual playoff games, hopefully followed by the playoffs. You know, what's weird is, is I think in the, in, in the world of a fan, as you're, as you're watching it, you kind of feel like every day is that day. <laughs> as, uh, as I, you know, if I look back to when I was a kid, when I'm watching it, every game, you know, you're so high and you're so low. And, and I guess over these ten games, the, the key becomes as a player, just making sure you're focused on what's in front of you and and not worrying about what lies ahead and not thinking at all about what's already in the rear view. And 
And that's a real challenge. And, and hopefully it's something that, that through development, that, that during our time here together, we've, we've done well and kind of, I guess, passing along to our players is, is just that, you know, be where your feet are and go out there and, and do what you do, control the moment. And, you know, we, we tend to do that very well, which is why I think we bounce back after we, we lose a couple and, and we don't let it compound on us. You bring up that analogy of a marathon, and as I'm thinking about that, with three runners in the final mile and a half or, or mile or however it would correlate to a baseball season, I, to your point, I don't think they're really worried or focused on the matchup with who's next to them. I think they're so just locked into the prize at the end and finishing and winning it. I am curious, do matchups come into play? Because when you talk about NBA playoffs, or, or it's all about matchups. You hear that all the time. Or in the NCAA tournament, it's all about matchups, matchups, matchups. Do matchups come up into play with Houston and Texas, or is it a little bit more about that individual and what you do? I think it's all about what you do. And then right now we are, you know, in a weird way, we're all, you know, within gummed up and within a half game of one another. And we are the, the unique one in that we control all of that because of who we're playing and and that's you know parts gift and and part you know a little bit scary that that you're going in and and every one of these games matters that much to the to the final outcome but you know it's it's great to be in the driver's seat in that way you know we may be you know a half a game behind houston but the fact that we're playing all 10 of our games against the astros and the rangers is meaningful and and then after that, it's just getting in, you know, getting on the dance floor and, and trusting that, that our 26 men and our strategies and our readiness is better than whoever we play. So, you know, to that end, once we get to the, the, the end line, however we get in is how we get in. It's just a matter of winning the games between now and then. Just to talk through a couple of the individuals on the team, I wanted to start with Cal. Uh, we've talked so much about his bat and the power and the way he handles the staff, but all of a sudden in the last couple of weeks, the numbers thrown out runners went from maybe a little bit of a concern to, oh my God, what an amazing strength. What has he done over the last few weeks defensively? You know, it, it's it has been remarkable how big those those thrown thrown out stealings or cost stealings have been for us in the moment, and you know how it, I I can look back in my mind's eye whether it's ending a game or, or two in an inning, is he has been throwing the ball very well, and and it, this is part of Cal's skill set. You know, he's he's always thrown the ball well, he's always managed it, but. More than anything else, like the the caught stealing to end the game, you know, at the Angels game a week back, it's the the two and netting uh, early, I guess, in the Oakland homestand. You know, what Cal has a, a knack for is coming up big in the big moment. Whether it's throwing a runner out, it's a big homer, it's the you know, it's the hit that you needed. He has that that innate ability to, to step up and do that thing whether he's going good or not with the bat or with the glove it, he has the ability to rise in that moment and you know he's he has had a big season and and he's had an even bigger second half and it, with the with the as much humility as you can have you know i said to him uh, after the game the other night in oakland i said wow awesome job throwing and he said great tags <laughs> that's all i said and you know and i think that's 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 Cal is, uh, you know, he's just kind of unassuming. He goes about his business. And when you look up and you see, you know, the, the body of work is pretty remarkable. How cool was it that the hundred RBI came on an oppo taco and nobody has hit more opposite field home runs than Julio Rodriguez. You know, Saul was saying earlier in the year and Julio said it after the game. Yeah. I, I, I know I have power. I can, I have pull power. Did this thing flip a little bit in June, July, and certainly into the most red hot August we've ever seen? Once those home runs started going the other way, uh, you know, I, I think the the opposite field homer suggests to me more than anything else. It suggests to me that he's in the strike zone with the barrel of his bat, and that he's allowing the ball to get in there, and you know, it's, it, he's waiting to trigger his swing. And if you do that, you're just gonna you're going to you're going to be hitting better pitches because you track them deeper in. And uh, I know that might sound a little bit 
scientific, but it shouldn't be. You know, it's, you're, you're getting a little bit longer to track the ball and you get a little bit longer to decide whether you're going to swing or not. And he has the gift of insane athleticism and bat speed where, you know, he can wait a little longer than the others and still hit it, you know, 375 to 420 feet to, to right center field on a line. <laughs> it's a, he's, he's gifted. And, uh, you know, his, his season has been unbelievable, uh, especially what he's done since the 1st of July. And, and I think if you count back to, to that point, you know, from the, from the 1st of July or even the 1st of August, you know, no matter where you cut it off, he's going to be one of the two or three best hitters in our league in almost every category power speed it's it's roughly you you look it's slug it's batting average it's hits it's counting stats it's it's more boutique metrics it, he's doing things that that are pretty unbelievable and then you consider the fact that he won't turn 23 until december and I, he's he's been a driving force mm. for sure i like the term boutique metrics that's funny mm. and i don't think i've heard that one i like i mean i think i know what you mean but just sort of a a funny way of looking like a boutique hotel but they're these yeah very specialized metrics and they show just how good somebody like julio can be uh as we go through some some again a few other individuals canzone's home run yesterday I, I mean, just an absolute – when he gets the home run, he doesn't get cheated at all. He hits some real legit ones. Are there ways to try to get him into the lineup more against righties now that Kelnick's back? Could we see a Mike Ford maybe play first base or something like that to try to get more lefties into the lineup? I certainly don't think it's out of the, the realm of possibility. And, you know, it's the, the beautiful thing is that there's a challenge to it. You know, J.K. swinging the bat well. Mike Ford has been really good for us this year. And and when you have the, the I guess, when you have enough appealing players from a single side of the plate that you can line them up and, and one of them is, is left sitting on the bench on a given day, it's kind of a luxury that we've never had. And, you know, I, it's more the other way where you're looking for that one guy that you can find that might be able to slip in there. And, you know, what I, you can see it and, and it was never more apparent than in the Oakland series. It, it's fun to manage when you have the Canzones and the Dylan Moores and the Sam Haggerty's and the Mike Fords and, and the Josh Rojas's. And when you get to that certain point in the game, you can start juggling to create left, right matchups. And, and, and it actually won us a game there in the middle of that series. And, and I, and I, I think it's a good thing. You know, Josh is, 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 has been great for us since he came over. He provides you that when he came over, I think we saw better versions or more, you know, contribution from the right-handed hitters who sub in for him. And the same is true of Dom. You know, it's when he gets his opportunities, he's got that big bang in him. And, and we're just maybe that one right-handed bat short of being able to juggle it all day long, but I'd rather view it as a luxury right now. And we'll worry about how to manage big picture, you know, plate appearances in 2024 for right now put the best guy in the best matchup and let him roll and, and we'll see where we land. Jerry, you got any boutique metrics that you know will be extra, extra critical in these final 10 days? I, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, there it's a, mostly because you're asking me that one on the fly and I haven't had a chance to think through, you know, but yeah. the, you know, a boutique, it's just a, a foofy, fancy stat to, that tells us, you know, more often than not, that there's something happening underneath the, the hood that maybe we're not seeing as clearly. And, and uh, you know, it's, there's always something. And, and, but with 10 days to go, this one's, you know, it's about focus. It's about grit. It's about not giving away outs. And, you know, more than anything else, I think these last 10 games – our focus, and this is not a boutique stat in any way, but it, I would, we call it free bases. You can't give up the free bases. You know, the, the walks, the errors, the, the advancing on dirt balls, that's how you win close games. Playoff baseball is typically, you know, tightly contested. It's going to be a lot of you know, tight games, and we're used to playing in these types of games. And, and this is where you win those games, is, is, is in the trenches with you know, the, the ability to limit those three bases and find ways to generate them on your own. We knew the team was tired coming back from uh, the long road trip. They had the home stand, a nice three game sweep where none of the games were that, that close in Oakland. Where is the team at now sort of, 
I don't want to say health wise, but 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 sort of exhaustion or or energy energy wise, especially in the bullpen. Yeah, I think across the board, we're in really good shape. Uh, you know, it's we were able to, to get through the three games in Oakland without doing, you know, crazy things. Our starting pitchers gave us innings, which was huge. Uh, you know, our bullpen was able to reset some where nobody got beat up over those three days. And now you get the one last breather, you know, the, the final off day of the season before you go into the gauntlet. And there was some energy, you know, leaving the ballpark yesterday, getting on the plane, and I think part of that was that the guys knew they had an off day, you know, that they knew what was coming. And, and there's, you know, they're as fired up to, to experience this as they think, you know, our fans are to watch it. And, and, and not even just our fans. I'm certain that it's also true of the Astros and Rangers fans and, and just around the league. I think the, the excitement for what's happening in the L.O. West, the LO West right now is, like, is palpable. You, you see it in national broadcasts or on the network. It's, it's fun for baseball. You got it lined up uh, sort of along those lines. You got it lined up so that each pitcher right now makes two more starts the rest of the way. Is there any chance we could see that get juggled at all? Not necessarily the way the Astros just did in terms of matchups, but to use somebody out of the pen in a big spot and then have to go with a bullpen day or anything like that. Is there any, is there any chance we could see things get moved around? I guess it's possible that it won't be because we designed it that way. You know, when we, when we, made our adjustments and we gave Wu a little bit of a break. You know, we, we set it up to, to land the way we wanted it to land coming down the, the, the stretch and give ourselves, the, I guess, the best opportunity to, to both go out and win a division and set ourselves up, you know, for, for what we hope is, is an early playoff game and you know it's in an ideal world we do win the division and we get a little bit of a break but you know it may not work out that way fortunately for us i think we have five starting pitchers that we really trust and we have a bullpen that i'm certain over these next 10 days are going to have to pitch a lot in, in order for us to get where we want to go and and we're probably not going to fiddle around with that too much just let it let it play out and, and give the guys that, that brought us here the opportunity to, to finish it off Hey, last two ones from me, Jerry. Kind of a fun one first. Did you ever pitch against Deion Sanders Prime? I did. And it was I have to say, pitching against Deion, I wouldn't call it, you know, it, it wasn't like Mark McGuire was getting in the box. But when Deion was on first base, it was terrifying. <laughs> and and I, I, he played, there was a period of time where he was in Cincinnati and they had, you know, they had, Dion and and Barry Larkin and Reggie Sanders, you guys who could really run and steal bases. But when Dion was on first base, it was just different than the others. To the extent that you know, during my Rockies years, I, I was with the Rockies for four years in the in the ninety late nineties, and and Don Baylor was our manager. And in spring training, we had the Dion drill. You know, we had a we had a drill where, and I don't remember the exact time allocation. But he used a stopwatch to time, you know, us getting over to first base on the, the three to one feed, you know, the ground ball to first base wow. feed to the pitcher, because we had experienced multiple instances the year prior of Dion beating our pitcher to the bag <laughs> going down the line. So, we, so we, through spring training, we just timed it, and uh, it was it was uh, one of those things. You, you, as you're going through it, you're rolling your eyes, thinking this is ridiculous. Until you are the one having to cover first base, and he's yeah. breathing down your neck. Ty France ever meet Don Baylor? It feels like those two guys should talk about getting hit by pitches and just sort of like <laughs> kind of go over the art of it. No, I wish he would have. You know, sadly we lost Don a little earlier than we should have. Yeah. But Ty is. Ty is, uh, you know, he's having that year where he's just wearing it. And, you know, in a weird way, and, and, you know, I've been around players like this before, you know, Carlos Quentin had this skill, and and it really is a skill. Guys that stand close to the plate, that don't give up ground, you know, that that do wait, uh, it's, it's, it's unique and, and it is a weapon because it allows Ty to run an on base average that's above the league average. And, and, you know, as long as he keeps getting hit on that, that shoulder guard, and I know it hurts, <laughs> but it, it has to hurt less than getting hit flush. And, and uh, it is, it is, a, you know, a, a weapon for certain offensive players and it sure has been for Ty. Well, fun thing is I've ended most of these over the last couple months asking you just specifically about this series 
and you have painted, whether it was heading to, to New York or, or the different series that we have faced here over the last month or two, just in a way that we don't always see. So from, uh, from your seat, just as you can just kind of forecast these next three in Texas against this opponent, what will be just some of the most critical keys? Well, I mean, I think it goes without saying these will be, you know, the next three biggest games we've played all year. And, and in some ways, for a lot of our players, this will be a similar experience to what we felt last season when we went into, you know, our, our postseason series with, with Toronto and Houston. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just it's controlling the moment and not letting it get a, too fast going out there. It's a, it's a huge ballpark. You know, if you've not been here at the new ballpark in Texas – it is enormous and it's, it's built, it feels like it's built, you know, north and south more than just about any other ballpark in our league. So it feels like you're in this giant auditorium once the roof closes and (laughs) don't let the size or the enormity of of the moment, you know, take you over. And, and our guys do a great job at that. We have such, and this is a tribute to Gino. It's a tribute to JP that, you know, guys in our clubhouse who are able to keep the intensity without losing the looseness. And that's going to be important for us this weekend because you got to throw strikes. You got to keep them off the bases and more important than anything, you have to keep them from advancing without doing something to, to earn it. It is so crazy how differently, you know, all three of these teams are a built and B have gotten to this point, but we are going to get to witness something that no one's ever seen before. So uh, I'm very, just as a baseball fan, as a Mariner fan, Pretty darn excited. Jerry, thank you. We appreciate uh, you taking a few minutes. And, of course, we'll do it again. When we do it next week, we'll be gearing up for basically the final series of the year. Unbelievable to think about. So thank you. Appreciate it. You got it, guys.